Scourge of the valley for hundreds of years, the dead king has quietly amassed power, unchallenged by the Denzians of the valley. But he now moves into our cities, bent on changing the world as we know it. Instead of life, singing, and the joy of children laughing in our streets, our cities will be plagued by death. Some have tried defeating him, but none have yet succeeded. All who go up against him eventually fall to his power and join his ranks in the Bone Legion. I fear the population is close to deserting this valley, for the Bone Legion led by the dead king now moves, seeking to destroy life wherever he can find it. Please, help us. Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start a solo playthrough of Hexplorit, the Valley of the Dead King. So I wanted to showcase this game because right now on Kickstarter, there's only about four days left. There's the Hexplorer, the Forest of Adramon, which is an expansion for this game. So I'm not playing with the expansion because it's not out yet, but I want to show you what the base game is like and then you can see if maybe you want to back this game. It looks pretty sweet. I will also say there are a couple really good playthroughs already out there. Rolling Solo and Beyond Solitaire both have playthroughs. Rolling Solo uses two characters and Liz from Beyond Solitaire uses one character and they're both showing you how to play the game as well. So make sure to check those out. I'll put links in the description below so you can jump to those if you want to see them. For us here today, this video is going to be simply how to set up the game and then from there we will jump in to the playthrough. The first thing you want to do in this game is choose one of these awesome looking heroes. And yeah, I just have to say the art here. Yeah, I think um, Adam from Rolling Solo is using this one. Oh, so cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, uh, I, some of my favorite art in a game that I have seen has been in this game. I mean, this looks awesome. So we're going to grab, I'll just grab the two that we're going to use. Yeah, I kind of thought about using her. But what I decided to do is I'm going to use our Berserker here and our Trap Specialist. From there, we get to pick one of these tons of different types of races. So there are so many here. I decided to pick two. You can pick randomly or you can pick thematically. I, I decided to pick thematically this time. So our trap specialist is going to be a leprechaun because come on. <laughs> How awesome is that? A trap specialist leprechaun? Yeah. And then our berserker is going to be an Ursimar. There's a ton of information on these race cards, and you're going to be placing them on your specific player mat, so for the Berserker and for our Trap Specialist. So what we see up here, it tells us what our favorite opponent is. It's going to tell us for our vitals, our abilities, and our skills, which things to adjust based on this specific race. We also each have a special ability. For our Leprechauns, since they are a solitary sprite who enjoys producing shenanigans, <laughs> I love that, up to three times per game turn, a Leprechaun may spend one gold to modify a damage roll, a skill roll, or a circumstance roll result by one. The new result may even be a Hexplode. That is so cool! The Ursamars are half men and half bear. They are fiercely loyal and quick to anger. Once per game turn for three energy, they roar, inspiring courage in their allies. Each damaging ability used against their opponent this round deals an additional three damage. <gasps> cool, so that would even make our little tiny leprechaun have a nice attack. So now we're gonna set up our player boards. So here's the back side of the board, and here's the back side of the board. Now this is the area where we're gonna keep all of our stat numbers. To start off with, we get to choose a name for our character. Now, Adam did this too, and I really like doing this. If you guys have a suggested uh, name for our two heroes here, let me know. So I'm going to leave this blank, and then in the next video, I'll choose one of the names you guys suggest in the comments, and we'll use those going forward, okay? So we'll leave the name blank for now. We should also write what our favorite opponent is. And if you can read this, I will be very impressed. <laughs> I am terrible at writing. This is a magical nature. So if there's an enemy that's a magical nature, we'll get to roll an additional Hexplored die and add that as damage. In the center part of the board, we have what are called our mastery abilities. These abilities will have to use energy to use them, but then they give us some sort of special ability. Think of it like it's the way that we differentiate ourselves from other players. I'm not going to go into detail on these right now. We'll learn them as we play through the game. On the left side of the board, we have our abilities. 
For each role, you'll see a standard number here in the upper left corner. You see that two? That means generally for this triggered assault, we put a two for the amount of damage we do. Or this flee, we'd put a two for our defense. But the fun part about this game is that our race can affect these uh, specific stats. So if you see here, we get plus one on attack for our leprechaun. So our leprechaun will actually be a three instead of a two. And then for our defense, we're really good at running away. We'll place a three. There we go. We're going to do the same thing for our first mastery and second mastery abilities over here. So we start out at both having them be twos. Looking at our race card, though, we get to add plus two to our first mastery. So that's actually going to be a four. But then we don't get to add anything for our second mastery. So that'll be back to a two. Over here in the vital section, we'll have five health. And we look here, we add nothing for health. Because, come on, leprechauns aren't going to have that ton of health. But we'll add plus two to the energy. So this leprechaun will have six energy. These are our max stats for now, so we'll also put them here as our current. And then if we take damage or we use up energy, we'll reduce those numbers. The final part of our mat is our skills. At the end of each round, we're going to potentially have to roll all three of our different skills. Navigate, Explore, and Survival. I'm just going to tell you now, the Explore with the yellow die is about us finding gold. And that makes perfect sense that we get to add plus four <laughs> to that. So normally we'd only have a one as a trap specialist. We get a five here. And so we're going to be rolling a d10 each round. And so it's going to be really likely that we find treasure. Perfect. Totally makes thematic sense as a leprechaun. These other ones will just be what the numbers are up here. So one and two. I almost forgot. We need to set up our food rating. We need to look at our race card to determine what our food rating is. It is one. At the end of each game round, if we do not roll a successful die on our success survival roll, so we roll higher than a two on a 10-sided die, which will happen often, <laughs> we'll have to eat one food, or our food rating, which is one. We start out with two times the amount of our food rating. So we'll start with two food. So we can just make a line up to two. The maximum amount that we can hold for food is five times the amount of our food rating. So since our food is one, one times five is five. So we're never going to be able to go past this line right here. Wow, I will erase that later. But yeah, we can never hold more than five food. Since we're playing a one to two player game, we start off with 24 gold, which is nice. We'll do the same thing for our Ursamar Berserker. So you can see here, Bash will do five points of damage. We got 12 health, not a lot of energy. And look at our survival. Yeah, five out of 10. That means essentially half of the time, we're not going to have to eat food, which is great. We, our food rating is three. Oh, I forgot to write that down. So we'll start with six food, but each round we're going to have to eat more food. And just so you guys can audit me, <laughs> you can see adding the plus four, plus two to the attack, plus one to each of our masteries, only plus one to the navigate, which is why it's two, but then plus four to survival. What do you guys say we now set up the game board? This is pretty easy. The game board, they come with a ton of different ones of these tiles, okay? But to do your first game, you only play with A, B, C, and D out. So you can see in these corners, A, B, C, and D. And you place them accordingly. So the fun part about this game is you can change the map all the time. You have what's called the Acalon's Guide to the Valley, and inside of here it gives you all these different options on how to build out your map, and that will totally change how the game is played. You don't just have to use that map as well. You're also going to be exploring throughout the game. There are these tiles. They are marked from E through N. Then what you do is you'll just shuffle these up and have yourself ready to rock to explore as you play through the game. Next, you want to set up the power cards next to the board. As you go and complete quests, you may be able to draw power cards, and they're going to give you benefits like, hey, secondary ma second mastery. You get to add plus one to it, stuff like that. Kind of cool. So just make sure you shuffle up the deck like so, and you're ready to go. You can also see that there are two different decks we have here on the board. We have our quest deck down here, denoted as a question mark, and our circumstance deck over here, denoted with an exclamation point. You're going to draw five cards from each deck after you've shuffled them and have them ready as you start the game. We'll start with the circumstance deck, but just for recording purposes, I am going to move the deck down lower just so you guys can see the cards that we're drawing. Let's draw our five circumstance cards. The first one I'm going to draw is going to go into slot one. 
Why that matters is at the end of each game turn, we'll roll a die, and if we roll a one, that's the circumstance that's going to happen. So none of these are going to happen right away. They're just ones that could potentially happen. So number one is shambling zombies. Ooh, that looks fun. Number two will be the hunter's bounty, and that's an event. Number three is an apparition. <laughs> 18 health, 20 energy. Jeez. Number four will be the fisherman's luck. I, I like fisherman's luck. And number five will be the hidden chest. Oh, I would like that. So I'm going to place those up on the top of the board, and we'll go through these as we play the game. Now we're going to do the same thing with the quest cards. So our first one is uh, explore card. And you can see it. You see how this says um, map tile C, and there's a little dot here? This shows you where on the map you need to go to be able to complete this quest. So what we'll do after we have drawn all five is we'll place these on the map to show where we need to go. Our next one, number two, is going to be an aid card. That's on uh, tile K. That's one of those circular tiles. So right now we'll place nothing on the board. We have to go and explore to find that. Number three will be another aid. This one is on the A tile, and we do have the A tile out. Number four is the Arless Tomb, and that's on uh, tile H, so we won't place that out. And finally, we have, oh yes, the Quest Arc. So what we're going to do here, we have to draw two additional quests and place them on top of this card, face down. Flip over the card on the top to show your first quest. When you complete both, you can return them in, uh, turn them in for your successes. So we'll flip this over, and our first one is a duel, and that we're going to have to find on tile H. Currently, we only have two out of the five quests on the board, and they're here and here. So now we get to find out where we are going to start. We're going to place this little uh, miniature on the board to denote our party, but we have to roll for it. We're going to roll, and depending upon what we roll, we'll place our uh, miniature on one of the six cities. Let's give that hex die a roll. And we rolled a two. Number two is way up here on tile A, but not too terribly far from this quest that we could maybe go on. Our berserker and our trap specialist, because I don't have names for them yet, will each get three dice, one for each of the colors denoting our skills. Finally, we do have the dead king here. Now, this is the whole point of the game. What we're trying to do is defeat this, the dead king here. He is currently not on the board. At the end of each round, we're going to roll a six-sided die. And if we roll a six the first round, he'll come out. If we roll a five or six the second round, he'll come out. And that keeps going down and down and down until he finally comes out on the board. And what he's going to try and do is ransack or forsake all of the cities on the board. And there's a total of six cities on the board. If he does that before we defeat him, he wins. If we try and fight him and we lose, he wins. How we win is by defeating the dead king. We have completed setup, but something I want to talk about before jumping on to starting the playthrough is that right at the beginning of the game, we can use our 24 gold. And I would really suggest, just based on the limited amount of times I've played this, that we should use that money because <laughs> we're going to need it. So we're at city number two, which is called the Dragon's Port. The Baron Laswell runs the seedy port and is largely concerned with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Despite this fact, many valuable goods arrive each day. We can purchase exotic maps here for three gold. On the back side of this player aid, they also have all the different things you can buy at the market. It tells you the gold amount, the description, and then how many times you can use it. So like if you get camping gear, it's permanent. And I'm kind of thinking camping gear is, is a no-brainer. But I want to know what you guys think that we should get. So feel free to pause the video here, see if you can read those descriptions, and then let me know what you think we can buy. We each have 24 gold. There's one other thing that we can use gold for, and that's upgrading our gear. What you need to do is look for the numbers that are surrounding the hex on your roll card. The cost to upgrade it is located on the outer edge, and you'll always start at the northern tip. So to upgrade this stat, you had to pay four gold, but then you can upgrade this number from three to four. And you can go all the way around and keep upgrading it, but each time you do that, it costs more to upgrade. So let's say, for example, this Berserker, we'd like to upgrade his ex Explorer so he has more chances of finding gold. We would have to pay three gold to do that, but then we can change this number to a three. And on a 10-sided die, well, we have to roll three or less to succeed at an Explorer, so it's more likely that we'll succeed if we increase that. 
There you have it. That is the setup for Explore It, the Valley of the Dead King. I have two pieces of homework for you if you're willing to do it. One is to help me out with some names for our Berserker and our Leprechaun. And then the other one is to give me some suggestions on what you think you would buy for our Berserker and our Leprechaun with the 24 gold each. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you at the next stop.